Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The topic of discussion for today's MCQs is hemichordates and invertebrate chordates. Let's move to the question number one. Which of the following is not a characteristic of hemichordates? Hemichordates, like other deuterostomes, they are, they are having blastophore and which form the anus. They are having ciliated pharyngeal slits and complete digestive tract, but their circulatory system is open. As you can see over here, there are certain blood vessels and sinuses, dorsal blood vessels, ventral blood vessels, and sinuses where the blood flows into the open body cavities. That's why right option will be closed circulatory system, which is an irrelevant option here. It's not the characteristic of hemichordates. They are having open circulatory system. And the digestive system, it is complete. So Charlie is the answer. Question number two. A group of invertebrate chordates is tunicates. It has another name that is C skirts. They are also known as C skirts. That is, they release water in the skirting fashion. That's why they are named so. Question number three. Nervous system in hemichordata is found in. Nervous system is ectodermal origin uh, in hemichordate and it is found in the epidermis of these organisms. As you can see over here, there are uh, nervous system which is epidermal in origin lies at the base of ciliated epidermis. And it consists of dorsal and ventral nerve tracts in case of hemichordate. This ventral nerve cord and here is a dorsal nerve cord in hemichordata. So right option will be alpha. Question number four. Hemichordates which form U-shaped burrows and are known as acorn worms, they belong to the class Enteropneusta. Enteropneusta, they are the members which are having, uh, they are the members of hemichordate which are having 70 species and they are also known as acorn worms and usually they form U-shaped burrows in the sand. So right option is delta over here. Number of pharyngeal slits in members of enteropneusta is variable. That is, their pharyngeal slits, they are not fixed. They may vary in their number. So right option is delta variable. Number six, the digestive tract of enteropneusta is simple, Tube-like, as you can see over here, in this class of hemichordata, there is a simple tube-like digestive system in this uh, group. Respiration in acorn worms occurs by, in hemichordates, the respiratory system is absent. So they respire with the, pro, uh, with the help of diffusion from their body surface. There is no specialized respiratory system in the form of gills, lungs, or other. So right option will be Charlie. Two contractile blood vessels are found in the blood of acorn worms or enteropneus. What is their position in the body? We have seen the previous diagram as well that there is dorsal and other ventral blood vessel in their open circulatory system. It is the open uh, dorsal blood vessel and it is the ventral blood vessel shown in this diagram of enteropneus. So right option is delta. Number nine, a series of sinuses or body cavities present at the base of proboscis in acorn worms, they are known as glomerulus. The sinuses which are present at the base of proboscis and actually the uh, aggregation of blood vessels is known as glomerulus, is surrounded by blood vessels. So right option is beta. Number 10, the larval form of enteropneus is torneria. They are having a specific larval form which is known as torneria and when the larval development complete, a torneria locates a suitable substrate and settles and begin to burrow and elongate. The length of this larval form is up to one millimeter. So right option over here is Charlie. Number 11. Which of the following is largest class of phylum hemichordata? Hemichordata, they are having maximum number of species in acorn worms or enteropneus. There are 70 species. 
The other class, Pterobranchia, is having only 20 species, while Panctospheroidea, there, there is only one noun species in this class of Hemicardita. So right option over here will be Delta. Number 12, grenades of Pterobranchia, they are found in the collar region. As you can see over here, it's the collar portion and collar part, it contains grenades with the other body parts. So right option over here will be Charlie. Pterobranchia have a planular like lava which lives in the dash before metamorphosis. It lives in the female's body tube. These are the tubes of the body and it lives over there before settling or before moving into the other substratum. So right option is Charlie. Only one known species found in this class of Hemicordita we have discussed in the pre uh, previous slide as well. It is Planctospheroidea that is having only one known species. One of the following is not the feature of Cordita. All chordates are having notochord, dorsal and hollow nervous system, and post anal tail. But their contractile blood vessel is not present on the dorsal side, it is present on the ventral side. So, delta is improper statement, improper answer over here. So, right option will be delta. The chordates, they are having ventral contractile blood vessel instead of having dorsal. Nodogal is a feature, dorsal and hollow nerve cord, postinal tail, pharyngeal slits, but blood vessel, it is found on the ventral side. Right option over here will be delta. Number 16, phylum chordata is named D2. The name chordata, it is uh, derived from the term notochord. So right option is alpha, it is the basic feature, which is uh, found in all chordates and at embryonic stages. It may persist in some of the caudate classes, such as some fishes, uh, partly or completely. But in majority of the vertebrates, it is converted into the parts of a vertebral column. Number 17, earliest caudates used their pharyngeal slits for filter feeding, which are later on used for the purpose of respiration. But earliest caudates, they were capable of extracting nutrients from the environment by using their pharyngeal slits. Pharyngeal slits they develop into dash in terrestrial chordates. There is a diagram shown over here. Actually in terrestrial chordates pharyngeal slits or pharyngeal pouches also known as gill pouches they developed into eustachian tube the tube which connects middle ear with the pharynx and in case of aquatic vertebrates it developed into gills. So right option over here will be for terrestrial chordates, Charlie, that they develop eustachian tube by pharyngeal slits. Number 19, which of the following feature played major role for chordate success? Chordates, they are having notochord, endostyle, complex digestive system, but the most important feature which developed later on into the well organized nervous system is tubular nerve cord which is basic feature and considered as a major feature of chordates uh, which is responsible for their success on the land as well as in the aquatic environment the largest class in the subphylum urochordata or tunicate is is a cdsc if you can see over here uh, the members of the class a cdsc in subphylum urochordata they are all sessile as adults. They may be solitary or live in the form of colonies. Colony members, they are interconnected by horizontal structures known as stolons. So right option over here will be SCDSC. The other two classes, uh, three classes are Appendicularia, Sorbaracy, and Thaliacy. Which of the following is outlet opening for the water in tunicates? It is atrial siphon. Actually, tunicates are having two siphon and oral siphon or inlet siphon, which allows the entry of water into their body cavity. And then an outlet siphon, which is known as atrial siphon. So Charlie is the right option over here. Number 22, 
adult urochordates they are adult urochordates they are all non motile or sessile and uh, that's why right option is beta tunicates they are sensitive to many kinds of stimuli and receptors for these senses are distributed over the body wall especially if you can see very especially they are distributed uh, around the siphons inlet opening or outlet opening here there are more receptors as compared to other body parts most obvious internal feature of urochordates is urochordates are having pharynx and atrium as their prominent features if you can see over this uh, atrial uh, uh, siphon and atrium the body cavity is a prominent feature another prominent feature is their pharynx or pharyngeal pouch ventral ciliated groove of tunicates is basically an endostyle it is ventral and ciliated as well as you can see over here the ventral side ciliated groove is known as endostyle blood plasma of tunicates is colorless it do not have any types of respiratory pigments or it is not having any type of color major excretory product of tunicates being aquatic you know aquatic animals they produce ammonia as a major excretory product that's why the right option will be alpha in this case that ammonia is a major excretory product number 28 tunicates they possess a dash larva which shows all basic characters of chordates they are having tadpole like larva that shows all characteristics basic characteristic of chordates such as presence of notochord pharyngeal pouches and post anal tail as you can see over as you over there is a tadpole like larva which is developed into neuton not uh, neuton tonic vertebrate ancestor and a stochoderm relation has been shown over here but tunicate larva form it is tadpole like so right option over here will be delta number 29 Lancelets is a name used for cephalochordates because they are lancelet like that's why they are named as cephalochordates or lancelets how many representative genera are known for cephalochordates there are only two representative genera for the cephalochordates is a small group relatively that's why right option will be alpha ciliated finger like projections called cerai they hang from the ventral aspect of the oral hood and are used in feeding purpose and this cephalochordates if you can see over here these are ciliated projections called cerai and they are just hanging out over here from the ventral side ventral aspect of oral hood and they are used as a purpose of uh, feeding for the feeding purpose that's where right option is alpha cephalochordates they are basically filter feeders and they get their nutrients by filtering marine water urochordates they are monoecious that is they are having male and female sexes in the same organism what is about cephalochordates cephalochordates they are basically dioecious they having separate sexes separate male and female individuals so right option is beta where number 34 the dor dorsal tubular nerve cord and pharyngeal slits are possible synapomorphies that link the hemichordata and chordata that is uh, it is their linkage characters beside other characters the hemichordates and chordates they are linked by having these structures as common pedomorphosis is well documented in the animal kingdom and it is more common among amphibians actually pedomorphosis is the retention of juvenile characteristic by the adults and it has further two explanations two types neoteny that is retention of juvenile characters only but pedogenesis which is also the part of pedomorphosis is also known as progenesis and it is the phenomenon of reproduction by a juvenile so over here you can observe 
the pedomorphosis phenomena in case of amphibians and it is usually regulated by thyroid hormones. The development of anterior end of the nerve core into brain is the characteristic of subphylum vertebrata which have developed the cranium or brain. So right option is delta. Which of the following is unique character of all chordates? Actually, chordates are having post anal tail, tubular nerve cord, pharyngeal slits, as well as notochord and dorsal hollow nervous system. And these characteristics, all of these characteristics, they are unique to chordates. So right option over here will be delta. Inshallah, next practice questions will be about class prices and they'll be uploaded soon as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Allah Hafiz.